Thanks, Richard. Um, really good to be part of the show. I think I've watched 40 something of the 68 you've done, so it's good to be this side of the camera once. And thanks to everyone for completing those questions. I'll come back to some observations of those, but first I'll give you some context for them. And I think if we were to look at the headlines surrounding professional services generally over the past few months, um, it, uh, quite a schizophrenic picture might emerge. On one hand, you've got firms and individuals doing fantastically well financially, but clearly struggling in lots of other areas. And whether uh, the advent of a chief happiness officer is going to change that, I don't know. Um, the senior partner of a top 20 law firm we spoke to about 15 months ago actually used a, a quite a disturbing phrase. He said, there's a lot of intellectual dishonesty in this sector. And what he meant by that was that for all the good words, as he said, about cultural well-being and purpose and so on, really what drives professionals today is what's always driven them and always will do, and that's money. People are just interested and motivated by money. Uh, well, maybe, but I think genuinely there is a recognition that the world is different. I think the ways people are deciding who to buy from and who to work for are changing, and there are quite powerful trends driving those changes but it's interesting we just did in that poll you know we're doing things differently but not measuring um, there is a phrase which comes to mind of what me gets measured gets done and I think for leaders to have the to know how to attract the right talent and have the, the right clients they need the right insights and that starts with asking the right questions and I was working with a professional firm three or four years four years ago now on the idea of defining leadership and, and we couldn't find a model that really identified what those powerful emerging trends are or, or allowed them to um, evaluate their own and their, as a firm and as individuals, performance on them. So did we know how well we're doing or things we need to be great at was, wasn't really available. So we created one, worked with a research company to turn it into something that could be quantified. And since then it's been validated through three waves of research across four markets, um, 30,000 consumer responses evaluating about 100 of the world's biggest business brands and we've got 210,000 data points and knee deep in data so we know as a piece of research it works and what we did was to take the trends and identify them we've got down to six dimensions which if I if I run through now and you'll see some of the background to the questions we've just looked at the first one is what we called awareness and that is a sense of is this a business that is in tune with the big picture, understands how needs are changing, can anticipate that, um, can put themselves in another's position. Out of that, the second one is then purpose. So if we know what the big picture is, can we articulate our role and our contribution to that? Is it visible in everything that we do? Third one is courage. Are we really prepared to be a leader, not to be a follower? Will we take the risk of perhaps being wrong? And that's difficult in a professional services environment, I think, naturally. Um, then courage, uh, uh, sorry, it's not courage, sorry, generosity, a really interesting one and challenging one. Um, do people give of themselves? Are they motivated by more than self-interest? Do they recognise and encourage others' success? Then integrity, will they do the right thing even when no one's watching? Can we, they be trusted to do the right thing by people? And finally, delivery, will they keep their promises, never let people down no matter what the circumstances are? So those are the six that we tested through those uh, uh, research studies I mentioned made it more specific now to leadership issues within the private, sorry, within the professional services sector. Um, I've done that with a collaborator who may well be on this call, who's known to several people in this forum, a chap called Gordon Brown. And Gordon and I go back, way back when, and he has conducted, I would guess, around eight to 900 interviews with clients of professional services firms. I can chip in a couple of hundred to that. Um, and in the recent conversations we've had, both with clients and with um, leaders of the firms, around these six ideas that we've had, this what we call Leadership Six, um, it's been interesting that from the client's perspective, actually, they would still be saying, even towards the end of last year, that most of what we're seeing as being called, my abbreviation, client listening programs, still tend to be rather backward looking, still tend to be more focused on the operational delivery issues, um, one guy said uh, the last 10 years issues, but sometimes given different names. Now, pre-pandemic, Gordon and I were having these conversations with GCs, clients, and with um, leaders in, in the firms. And it was obvious then um, that the leadership teams were already wrestling with, with these issues. Interesting, there's a PwC report in, I think, May or June of 2020 that said the need to transition to a new world was already clear long before COVID. It's just made everything much quicker. 
Um, one managing partner of a law firm we spoke to said, we've been talking about these ideas for a long time. I wish we'd had this framework to work with. Now, sort of, I don't want to say post pandemic, but now two themes are coming through even more strongly. One relates to the question we've just asked, the value of having what one person called this outside in perspective. And that thought was, if we're committing more to ideas like culture and values and purpose and differentiation and brand in its proper sense, it would be instructive to look at organizations that have been doing this well for a lot longer. So the, the comment there from the GC about law firms comparing with each other was bad comparing with bad. There was another one where a managing partner said he'd love the chance to stand up at a partner's retreat and say, we are the apple of our sector. So the other thing that's coming through is that of those six dimensions, three are really seen as key to a proper sustainable recovery from what we've been through. And those three are awareness, generosity and courage. And we think in the discussions we've had to we'll say they're all hard challenges for leaders anyway, but especially more so in, in, in organizations which are paid to be right. Uh, and it's, it's less, it's less, um, it's less uh, straightforward for people to get into these sorts of conversations. Awareness really picks up, I think, what's coming through strongly is the importance of emotional intelligence as a quality that underpins the interpersonal relationships with colleagues and clients. And I think that really starts with self-awareness and conversations I've had recently with three or four executive coaches have said that this is really, um, really the, probably the number one on the list with, with clients they're working with. Second one is generosity. Um, that's the dimension that's grabbed most people's attention. That how do we demonstrate generosity? Um, and how do we make people feel that they're in an environment in which that is recognized? And I think that goes and really does challenge that view we had before of the intellectual dishonesty in the sector. Um, incidentally, I don't think any business can talk of having a purpose if it doesn't have awareness or generosity, so that's probably for another conversation. And the third one, then courage. And I think that's really about the spirit and commitment to being a leader rather than a follower. And it demands a different view of a different relationship with risk, which again, in, in organizations who are normally paid or expected to be right, that's difficult and that takes a lot of sensitivity. So bring it all together, I think as firms try to set a sustainable path towards that longer term recovery, yes, it is easy to be cynical. Yes, it is easy to talk about revenue figures and PEP and everything else, but we believe that there are firms um, and leaders within who really do want to, to make their businesses better and are willing to take up the other part of that PwC report statement, which was that um, it, it would be unfortunate, indeed catastrophic, not to take advantage of the opportunity that now presents itself to us.